Okay, so um, I'm Harold. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, sort of things that you should consider when you're doing RNA-seq analysis. So I'm not going to be talking right now about how to use Callisto, but um, sort of some overviews of what Callisto does as well as Sleuth and some of the other uh, methods that you might be using. Okay, so I'm um, just going to go over some quick preliminary, preliminaries, uh, some general workflow. Um, a little bit about units and normalization, as well as uh, an introduction to isoform abundance estimation, as well as uh, differential expression analysis. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so, okay, a fragment, I'm going to refer to a fragment as a physical piece of cDNA that was sequenced, okay? So there's an important distinction between a fragment and a read. So a read can actually be, um, Two different reads can have the same sequence, but they actually represent different fragments, right? So it's important that the same sequence can actually represent different fragments um, because the physical process of sequencing the things could technically just happen to arrive at the same sequence from two different uh, transcripts. Okay, um, so I'm going to be using the asterisk a fair bit. Uh, it's just a wild card. Uh, basically means that it matches many things. Um, Okay, and then the other sort of note that I want you to be thinking about a little bit is that uh, RNA-seq can be quite tricky um, and you should be aware of all of the normalizations that are necessary to compare uh, quantities. Okay, so on that note, the first thing is that uh, proper normalization is very important and transcripts with different length within the same sample are not comparable. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and the reason for that is basically this, uh, this uh, length bias that's inherent in the protocol of RNA-seq. Transcripts with, it, with the same length uh, between samples are actually not comparable as well. And the reason for that is because of sequencing depth, but also for differential expression. And we'll also talk about that. And uh, a combination of the two is worse. Uh, two wrongs do not make a right, especially in this case. So are, are, uh, is anyone not familiar with uh, the length bias in uh, RNA-seq? Okay, so I'll go through this really quickly then. Um, yeah, so not all reads are created equal, right? So the number of reads is proportional to the length of a transcript. So if you have two different transcripts that are of uh, different lengths, um, you, can, you can basically uh, take a look at the number of, frag or number of fragments that you counted along uh, each one of those transcripts. And you can ask which one of them is more highly expressed. So we actually got more counts in the situation from uh, transcript A um, than B. And just due to the fact that there's a, a length bias, because you expect to, you know, you have some long fragment, you chop it up, and then you expect just because it's longer that you would have seen more reads coming from it. Okay, so it turns out in this case that even though we saw more counts at uh, transcript A that at transcript, transcript B has higher expression. Okay, so RNA-seq is also a relative measurement. So this complicates uh, the analysis quite a bit. Um, two counts across experiments don't necessarily mean the same thing. Um, and we'll talk about how to deal with this uh, and how many tools deal with this uh, and if, near the end of this talk. So the general workflow is uh, usually like this. So at least this is sort of the classic workflow that most people employ. Uh, this is, you, you have two basic conditions, uh, condition A and condition B. This might be uh, some control and some treatment. And then you, gener you create some sort of uh, sequence library with uh, some standard prep. And then uh, this, this will give you, after you run it through the sequencer, um, you'll get some fast queue files. You might do some quality control to make sure that the, uh, the experiment didn't go awry. Um, and then you'll take those raw reads, and then you'll align them, and then you'll end up getting typically some sort of output that's a, a BAM output. Um, you can do alignment without or with an annotation. Without an annotation basically means that you're typically aligning directly to the genome. Um, and then you typically quantify somehow. So there's a number of different ways that you can quantify. I'll be, tip, I'll be going over uh, the sort of the Callisto and Sleuth pipeline. And then after that, you might ask uh, if there's differential expression. And you might get some targets from that differential expression analysis, and then you should do some follow-up experiments. By the way, if you have any questions, please, uh, please ask while I'm going through this. 
Okay, so this is sort of a newer workflow that uh, that a lot of the new tools are, are trying to to employ. This is uh, kind of what, uh, or this is what Callisto and Sleuth do. We basically couple the alignment and uh, the quantification. So I'll talk about what this means, and uh, this makes your life a little simpler in the sense that there's less things that you have to keep track of, as well as uh, there's uh, it, it's significantly faster than a lot of the previous workflows. So quality control. Um, so there's a number of different tools that do this. Uh, FastQC is one sort of uh, nice GUI uh, that allows you to sort of take a look at the quality of, uh, of the reads that come out of the machine. Um, so it's not as big of an issue as it was in the early Illumina days. Uh, this picture right here is pretty dismal, actually. Um, you notice that uh, at the very end of the reads, the, at the very end of most of the reads, uh, the quality is really, really bad. So in a situation like this, you'll often need to trim the reads uh, a bit just to get them to align or to not get a lot of spurious alignments. Um, and most aligners allow for trimming within the tool. Um, the other things that you can sort of check with FastQC is uh, the complexity of the library, right? So if you don't want to start off with uh, a bad library with uh, a lot of you know, PCR rounds because then you'll end up getting a really low complexity library and uh, this leads to a lot of problems in the analysis. Okay.